Hello everyone, this is Heath with the Music Technology Teacher Network, www.mutechteachernet.com. And for those of you that have listened to the podcast before or seen me on YouTube, first of all, thank you for continuing to watch. For those of you that maybe are seeing this for the first time, just to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I teach middle school music technology. So I teach music technology to 12 to 14 year olds every day at a middle school just outside of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, before that, I spent 15 years as a high school and then a middle school band director before I went into music technology. So most of my podcast and the videos are all concerning music technology, careers that are related to music technology, and other things that are surrounding that industry. But I will tell you first and foremost, I am not a technology expert. And really and truly, I hope that that is reassuring to anybody that's checking out my channel because the information that I'm bringing to you, um, uh, I'm not coming to you as from like a digital expert or a technology expert. I tell people all the time, I am a child of the, uh, I was born in the early <clears throat> 70s. So I am not a technology or digital native like all of our students are today. And I tell people all the time, listen, if I can figure this stuff out, I know that you can figure this stuff out. So all the information I'm going to bring to you, I'm bringing to you from a way that I can understand it, and which is not a very complicated way of, of understanding things. And a lot of times with our students, uh, what I usually want to do is try to find the simplest way to explain something and to help the students learn that. And even sometimes very complicated things concepts can be explained and learned through simple language and simple examples. So that's what I'm trying to do here uh, with the podcast and with the website and everything else. So I am here for those of you who, like me, are not maybe extremely comfortable dealing with technology. But <clears throat> again, if I can learn how to do this, I know that you can learn how to do this, and technology really can do many wonderful things for us as teachers, but also for our students. And there's a whole world of opportunities out there uh, in their futures uh, as they move on from us uh, into high school and college and beyond. So this summer, I've had a lot of time to kind of think about what I'm going to be doing with the podcast, or my goal at least was to really focus on my podcast uh, this summer, because I only uh, publish new episodes very sporadically. So... But then YouTube has come up with this new thing where you can publish podcasts on YouTube. So they're sort of visual podcasts. And I've been trying to think sort of how to manage this with my regular audio only podcast versus this new feature that's offered by YouTube. So my plan right now is every other week, like every Monday, I'm going to release an audio only uh, version of the podcast where I invite different people to come in and have conversations with me about what they do with music technology, with their careers, and some really awesome people that uh, I've already talked to that I'm working on getting those edited and others that I have planned out in the future. And then the Monday following those audio only releases, I'm going to release a video podcast on YouTube. So sometimes um, I may have some opportunities where I can publish the audio and the video together, but not all the interviews that I do with my guests uh, am I actually collecting the video versions of it. So this is going to be my first release as just a straight up video version of the podcast. And so I was thinking about what I would do for this topic. Um, I make videos all the time, mostly for my students. But I also make videos for my YouTube channel and my website. And over the years that I've been making these videos, there are some things that I've learned along the way that can help make your video better. So this episode is going to be about all the things that I've learned about creating better quality videos. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to talk about when it comes to making good videos is the angle of your camera and where you are actually going to focus your eyes as you're recording the video. So I see a lot of times when I'm doing videos or maybe I'm doing a video conference with people, a lot of times if you're using a laptop, people will put their laptop you know, on the desk in front of them and they'll just kind of angle their screen back and as they're doing the Zoom meeting or whatever. But what happens when you do that a lot of times is you get this angle 
where you have people that are kind of looking down their nose at you and you as a viewer are looking up their nose, which is not always a great thing that you want to have happen. So first of all, I think it's important when you set up your laptop and what I'm using to make this video is actually an iMac desktop and it's like a big 29 inch monitor. So it actually, the camera actually sits above eye level for me, which is actually perfect. Um, so, but even when I've used my laptop before, sometimes I've gotten a box or something to put my laptop on just to raise the level of the camera so that you're looking more at it at eye level and you're not looking at your camera uh, down your nose and people aren't looking up your nose. So one thing to think about is where you place your computer and where you have your camera placed as you're recording um, your video. And then the next thing is not only do you need to be concerned about how your camera is pointing at you, but you also need to think about where your eyes are situated into the camera. So for example, right now, uh, I have my video screen that's open on my computer, but it's kind of over to the side of my monitor. And I can see that activity going on and it's really um, tempting for me to fix my gaze on uh, what I'm seeing uh, on the video feedback rather than putting my eyes where the camera is and where the camera I can see there's a little green light there um, so I have to really think about keeping my eyes where the camera is coming from so even if I'm using notes which I will often do when I'm recording a video I always try to center my notes in the center of the screen so even if I have to glance down at the notes, maybe I'm just glancing down a little bit and I can go right back up to where the camera is, but I don't put them over on the side because then you don't want your gaze focused over to one side or the other or have to look down here. So think about as you're doing your video, the angle of the camera as it's looking at you and then where you're fixing your eyes as you're looking back at the camera. Because if you want the person who is watching your video to feel like you're talking to them, you want to make sure that you're looking at your audience. So it's kind of like as conductors, we learn, don't keep your head down in the score when you're conducting, keep your eyes up on the ensemble. And also when you're just in communication, uh, it's important that you look at the person that you're talking to. And just like if you're listening, that you want that person looking at you because nothing's worse than trying to talk to someone as you're talking to them, they're not looking at you, they're kind of looking somewhere else. But the same is true if you're trying to talk to someone, but you're actually looking at who you're talking to. So think about where are my eyes looking as I'm recording the video and what is the angle that the camera is looking back at me. Now, the next tip I want to give you about creating your videos is to think about what's going on behind you. So right now, if you look and see what's behind me, I have kind of a mess of stuff over here and over here is not normally how I like to have it set up. And sometimes I make videos in my classroom. And if in my classroom, um, I'm always conscientious about, before I start recording, to look at my surroundings, to see what it looks like behind me. Because a lot of times we don't think about that because when we're recording, you're looking at the screen, you're really focused on maybe just your face because we all are sort of ego-made driven um, organisms. So think about your background and what you want your background to look about. So I've kind of intentionally uh, sort of cluttered what I usually like to do here on the podcast that I create in my home. So this is where it sets up now and take a look at this and see if you can tell the difference in the background. And now here is the corrected version of the background. And when I say corrected, what I mean is really, I just want, I don't want to have clutter behind me, right? So if I have a background that is interesting and then maybe the viewer is looking at that, but I don't want a background that's distracting. So I think anything that is, uh, you know, it could be fairly plain, but it should certainly look comfortable. And, you know, for me, everything that I have in the background of my videos is meaningful to me in some way. And the thing about it is I don't have any uh, kind of like sponsorship or backing. So anything that I have on the podcast or our show, uh, I'm not doing it because someone's paying me to endorse the product because, or it's just because it's something that I've actually used or I found useful. So, uh, so yeah, so think about your background when you're making your videos. And the next thing I'm going to talk about is lighting. But even before I go into the part about lighting, if you notice behind me, the guitar behind me has a glare on it right now. And I'm looking, uh, even as I'm setting up, I'm checking to try to eliminate anything that's distracting. So if you notice, if I take this, 
even if I take the guitar and just change the angle uh, of the guitar, as far as how it's situated to the light, it gets rid of that glare. And so lighting is a really another important part of creating your videos. So let's talk about lighting next. So setting up the lighting for your video. I would say that generally speaking, the mistake that most people make when they create their videos is they don't have enough light on themselves or you think that the light that you have is adequate. And let me just show you a couple of different setups uh, of how I might deal with the light here. So right now I have a light set up in front of me. I'll show you about that in just a second, but let me turn it off and you'll be able to see the difference. So this is without the light. And this is with the light. And you give it a second, but you see that the screen will adjust to the light uh, as you make it. And I'm now going to switch. And so when I turn this off, all I'm dealing with now is an overhead, uh, you know, regular light bulb here in the dining room. And the, the color of the video will generally adjust, but you can kind of see after a couple of seconds, it gets darker and darker. And a lot of times what will happen is, particularly if you're dealing with natural light, because right now I've got all the shades and stuff closed uh, in the room, but let me see if I can get a little more natural light, even though it's sort of a cloudy day here uh, in Georgia today. And let me get to show you what that's gonna look like. Okay, so now with this view, with the lighting in the camera, what I've done is I have some um, windows over on this side of the room and I've opened the shades up on uh, the windows on that side of the room. And so I've got some light here, but you may notice that you can tell that there's a light source that's coming from over here that's not over here. So it gives me, you know, this side of my face is darker than when I get over here. And ideally, um, you want that light to kind of be even. So let me try, I'm gonna open another window and see what adjustment that makes. So as I come in here, now I've got light sources on both sides, but if you notice, it sort of makes the sides of my head shiny, but the center of my face is still sort of kind of dark, which is, again, it's not really, I think, ideal. And I may be overanalyzing, but I don't know. I think I'm analyzing okay. So you've got to think about, and if you notice too, even in the background, uh, you can see the picture behind me. There's now a glare uh, from one of the shades that I opened on that picture. Uh, which I notice now is kind of distracting to me. So, um, so yeah, so this is what just natural light looks like. And I'm going to show you the third option uh, that I usually go with. So it, with this setup, I am actually using a light ring uh, that I'll show you here in a second that I've got placed over around the camera uh, on my monitor. So the light is facing me and I've got the shades close around me. I've got the, the light on over me. Um, but just to show you a couple of things that are going to change the appearance, if I move closer to the screen, notice what happens to the light behind me. It gets darker, right? So you're going to get some automatic adjustments. And I'm using QuickTime, uh, by the way, uh, in creating a movie. And we can talk about apps in a minute. But if I move back, you can see that the lighting changes. And then even you know in the middle, if you notice that uh, there's somewhat of a shadow behind me now. So I like to find a place that is going to be comfortable where I think the light works um, and I don't get any kind of weird shadows or backgrounds. Now, the thing about this light ring that I'm using, it's not super expensive. Like I ordered it off Amazon and it was, I don't know, 30 bucks or something. But I can actually change um, the color of the light. So this, for example, is the yellow setting and um, I don't know for me it doesn't I don't really like that so this is white light and this is blue so as you're adjusting those uh, different light shades uh, and again as you make these colors the the whatever um, quick time or screen capture or, or things like that are going to try or even zoom is going to try to make uh, kind of automatic adjustments so but I usually go with the blue now the other thing that I can do is I can adjust the brightness or the intensity of the light. And that's on the lowest setting, but yeah, I don't want to get too bright. So this is as bright as it'll go. And that is as dark as it'll go. 
And I like to find just a place somewhere right in the middle where it's not creating any uh, weird shadows, but it also isn't making my face look too shiny. And if you notice with this setup, I don't have any glare on the guitar. I don't have any glare on the picture. Uh, the microphone that's behind me sort of has a bit of a glare. That's kind of weird, but if I change the angle, oh, look at that. Yeah, so you see the overhead light's interesting. The overhead light um, is just an incandescent light bulb with uh, a cover on it that makes it kind of a yellow color. So you get that yellow reflection there, but if I bring it down, yeah. So, and again, these are all may seem like really uh, minute details, but they're easy details to fix and check if you just pay a little bit of attention to what you're doing. Now, let me show you what I'm actually using here. So, uh, I feel like I uh, have a, like a, some kind of, I'm in Tron or something. So yeah, so this uh, setup I got from Amazon, like I said, I think is, um, I don't know, maybe 30 bucks or something. But it's actually set up where you can use it with a phone. So there's a clip uh, if you're making, because you can't make videos with your phone. So that's there. And it actually comes with a tripod that's around here somewhere. Oh yeah, here's my tripod. So you can set it up on a tripod and it just pretty high or low. Um, and I've tried it a lot of different ways, but even with this, you know, if I set it up on the tripod to one side, I'm going to get, again, just like when I had the window shades earlier, um, I'm going to get these kind of weird um, angles and shadows on me as I'm doing the video. So it's not really designed to be used this way, but it works. So what I do is actually have just used uh, the little flexi mount that they have here for your phone. And I've just used that to clip it over the center of my monitor. So now uh, the camera is actually centered on uh, or close to the center of the light source and I have the light coming directly at me so I don't get any kind of weird shadows back and forth. So um, that kind of goes with, I think that covers most of the visual setups with your video making. So the next thing we're going to talk about is microphones. So now let's talk about microphones. So obviously when you're making a video, you wanna be thinking about how you're capturing the visual image. But another part of it that is, I think equally important is how you capture the audio. And there are a number of different options you may have. And I will say this, as you begin making videos, whether it's just for your students, or you're trying to make videos that you're gonna publish on a YouTube channel, don't let a lack of any of these tools prevent you from getting started. So even, you know, when I first started uh, teaching music tech and I started making videos, I had very little of this. So all of these tips and tricks that I'm passing along are things that I've just learned along the way. So, but I'm going to show you uh, four different ways that you can capture audio for your videos. And one of the things you have to consider when we're talking about audio is how you're listening to the audio matters. So even some of these, uh, the differences I'm gonna show you with the microphones that I use, uh, your perception of the difference is gonna depend on how you're listening to this YouTube video. So if you're just watching this on your phone and you're listening to it through uh, the, your output on your phone, like the phone speakers, that's gonna sound really different than if you're actually maybe using your like earbuds uh, or your, uh, you know, the iPod, Bluetooth, or however you use it. So, um, you're going to get better sound quality depending on what you're listening through. So you might be watching this on your computer. And if you're using like the built-in output on your computer, the output is going to sound different no matter what microphone input that I'm using. So, um, so basically what I'm saying is the better quality you have, uh, for what you're, how you're listening to this, the better you're going to be able to discern between the differences you hear with the microphones. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna record the same uh, introductory phrase that I use on most of my podcasts, but I'm gonna use four different inputs. Um, and I'm not gonna tell you which ones, but the ones I'm gonna use is one, the built-in input uh, microphone on the computer, my desktop. Uh, I'm also gonna use, uh, one of the options that's there now is you can actually use your phone as an input source. So I'm gonna be recording all this on my desktop, but um, I'm going to use my iPhone as the microphone to go with the video that I'm recording, which is sort of kind of cool if you're using Apple products. And I'm an Apple guy. So if you're, if you don't use Apple, if you're doing PCs, a lot of this stuff can still apply, but 
that may not be an option for you. Uh, and then I'm going to use two different uh, USB mics uh, that I use to record uh, my videos and my podcast. So uh, let's take a, a listen to the four different microphones. And then after we listen to them, uh, we'll talk about which one is which. Microphone number one. Hello, everyone. This is Heath with the Music Technology Teacher Network, www.mutechteachernet.com. Welcome to the podcast. Microphone number two. Hello, everyone. This is Heath with the Music Technology Teacher Network, www.mutechteachernet.com. Welcome to the podcast. Microphone number three. Hello, everyone. This is Heath with the Music Technology Teacher Network, www.mutechteachernet.com. Welcome to the podcast. Hello, everyone. This is Heath with the Music Technology Teacher Network www.mutechteachernet.com. Welcome to the podcast. Well, what'd you think? Can you hear a difference between the four microphones? Let's try to listen again, and I'll use a shorter clip, and I'll try to put them a little bit closer together. Hello, everyone. This is Heath. 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 And one more time with another part, and we'll listen to those back to back to back. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the podcast. So what did you think? Could you hear a difference? I think you can definitely hear the difference between the microphones. So now here comes the big reveal. So the first microphone that I used was the built-in microphone uh, that's built into my desktop. So take, let's take another listen to that one. Hello, everyone. This is Heath with the Music Technology Teacher Network www.mutechteachernet.com. Welcome to the podcast. Microphones. So first of all, that one, uh, that microphone being the built-in microphone, it almost sounds like I'm speaking from a different room. And some of that is because physically I am further away from uh, the computer than I am from the other microphones, but not more than maybe, you know, eight to 12 inches further away. I guess I could get closer. But the thing about it is that built-in microphone is still going to have that sound as if uh, it almost sounds like I'm, I'm almost cupping uh, my hands over my mouth as I'm speaking. That, but you can hear that uh, built-in microphone is, is not a great option if you have another option. And the second one, let's listen to the second one. This was actually using my iPhone as the microphone. Hello, everyone. This is Heath with the Music Technology Teacher Network, www.mutechteachernet.com. Welcome to the podcast. So I do think that one's better than the built-in microphone, but it still has a very uh, sort of tinny, kind of very uh, uh, treble sound to it. But if you think about it, you know, when it comes to our telephones, they are actually putting a lot of research and resources into creating microphones that make our voices very easy to understand when we're speaking to each other. So by design, uh, the microphones in our telephones are designed to pick up uh, a very a more intelligible speaking voice, which is really going to sort of focus on bringing out the higher frequencies of speech. Because if you look at the frequency range that most of us speak in, that's where they're going to kind of tune that microphone. So you do, um, I think, get a little more clarity than you do from the built-in microphone, but it's still very trebly and very tinny to me. The third microphone uh, that I used was uh, my uh, Audio-Technica uh, 2020 which is a USB mic. So it's plugged in the USB and it's also the mic you can kind of see. Uh, I've got it on a boom arm here. Um, and, but I keep it about that level. So um, it may sound different now because I moved it, but uh, for the recording, I didn't move it. So let's take a listen to my uh, Audio-Technica 2020. Hello everyone, this is Heath with the Music Technology Teacher Network www.mutechteachernet.com. Welcome to the podcast. Now, I really do like the sound of that microphone. Uh, one, it does seem to have just a little more presence. Um, uh, yeah. I don't know how to exactly describe it. Like, you know, that first microphone, it almost sounds like I'm in a different room. The Using my iPhone microphone, it's like I'm in the room, but it's almost like I'm speaking across the room. One of the things I like about 
my uh, AT 2020 is there's, it does seem to be more presence. Like, uh, you know, I seem to be right in the recording instead of, uh, you know, coming from somewhere outside of the recording. The other thing that you may notice too, if you listen to it is it's not quite so trebly, it's a darker sound, but part of the reason the sound is darker is because it's bringing in more of the lower frequencies of my voice. And part of that is because of the size of the diaphragm that this microphone uses. This will be considered a medium diaphragm uh, microphone. So the diaphragm is the, the little circle, think about it like the drum head that is picking up the vibrations from the sound. So you have large diaphragm mics, medium diaphragm mics, and small diaphragm mics. And these are all condenser mics, by the way. So this is a medium diaphragm condenser mic, and there's only one recording setting on it. It's a cardioid, uh, pattern and that's the only pattern that it uses but I do like the sound of that um, and a microphone that's not very expensive um, just the microphone itself runs about 80 bucks um, when I bought the the boom arm the package it comes with uh, I think that sells for maybe around 130 140 bucks uh, to get the microphone and the boom um, but it's a pretty good little microphone for what I use it for now, let's listen to the fourth microphone. So the fourth microphone, those of you that are really observant may have noticed that this microphone back behind me disappeared on one of them. And so this is um, also a, uh, a USB uh, mic. This actually uses a, a USB-C connection um, uh, to hook into the computer. And it's made by AKG. Um, and this actually has four different options for your mic setting. It has just a straight front. It's what is called a front stereo tight, a front stereo wide. And then it also has uh, a uh, bi-directional or uh, figure eight pattern, uh, meaning that uh, it can record from both sides. So this could be a good microphone if you're interviewing someone in person and maybe you're sitting on this side of the microphone, your guest is sitting on the other, it's gonna pick up sounds from both sides. But for this, uh, example, I just used like the default uh, front setting, which is, is a cardioid setting, uh, similar to what I had with the uh, Audio-Technica. So let's take a listen to this one. Hello everyone, this is Heath with the Music Technology Teacher Network, www.mutechteachernet.com. Welcome to the podcast. Okay, and that doesn't sound too bad but um, and it, actually if you look at the specs on the two microphones that AKG uh, actually records at a higher bit rate uh, at a higher frequency than the AT2020 and I'm not going to get into too much uh, technical talk about that um, because like I said I'm not really a techie person but supposedly the AKG uh, actually has a little higher level of detail in the sound that you can get from the AT2020. But I still think that I like the AT2020 because it just has a little bit of a darker sound to it. And I think the reason, one of the reasons why is because it has that medium uh, diaphragm on it. The thing about the AKG is that inside of uh, this screen that covers it, um, one of the things, one of the reasons it has these options for recording patterns is because in underneath this, if I could pull it off and I'd have to, I'm not going to do that right now, but there's actually a, an array of like four small uh, dynamic, um, sorry, condenser microphones inside of this. So because it has these uh, four uh, small condenser mics, you can get those different patterns, the stereo tight, uh, the stereo wide and the omnidirectional. Um, so you, you have more options for recording patterns with this, but because uh, it's just, it uses smaller diaphragms for those microphones, you lose some of that uh, low end that I like getting out of the uh, Audio-Technica 2020. So, and the thing about these two microphones, they, they cost about the same. Uh, and actually this AKG is, I don't think they make this anymore because it was really sort of, I didn't know this when I got it, but it was really um, glitchy when it came to uh, most microphones you get are going to be plug and play. Like you just plug it in and it works. Uh, this one was weird. Like I had to do like a system update and a couple things before my computer would actually recognize this microphone. So I don't know if that's why they took it off the market or anyway, what the deal is. But uh, AKG is still a, a great company. They make lots of great products. Uh, but um, both of these microphones, the AKG and the AT2020, and actually you're looking at the back of the AT2020, 
Here's the front. They cost about the same. They're about 80 bucks a piece retail. And this, I bought these maybe three, four years ago. So maybe they've gone up a little bit. Uh, but, you know, 80 to 100 bucks for these uh, USB mics. Um, and the thing about, oh, I can't. See, right now, this microphone is what I'm recording on. So I'm sure you're getting all kind of weird sounds as I'm handling it and moving it and that kind of thing. But the thing about these USB mics is the there's an audio interface built into it. And when I mentioned before that the bit rates are different, what they're talking about is how these microphones convert the audio or the actual physical vibrations of my voice hitting the diaphragm, how that's converted into digital information that goes into the computer. So that's going to be your audio to digital conversion rate. And the AKG actually, I think, runs at a 24-bit rate. Um, whereas the Audio Technica, I think, is at a 16-bit rate. But again, uh, it's not just the the analog to digital conversion that comes into it, but also uh, the size of the diaphragm. And you know, every mic is a little bit different. So um, anyway, so microphones, something to think about uh, as you're making uh, your YouTube videos or your podcast. Again, you don't have to have. Um, you know, you can use your iPhone or you can use your built-in microphone. And there's things you can use with different dolls to, uh, you know, try to make that audio sound a little bit better. But you can get some really pretty good uh, microphones, especially just for podcasting. If you're just trying to record like your voice or your interviews, um, there are, you know, very compact USB microphones that you can buy for around 50 bucks, um, you know, even 30 to 50 bucks. Samson is another company that makes uh, some really good um USB microphones uh, to look into. Uh, Zoom uh, has some great microphones. Sure, you know all the microphone companies, um, you know have these USB mics. Uh, Blue, uh, the Blue Snowball, that was probably one of the first companies that really went into the USB microphone market. So I would definitely look around, you know, shop around um, to uh, you know look at updating your uh, microphone that you're using to record your videos. And the last thing I want to talk about with these tips for creating videos uh, for YouTube, your students or whatever, is your video editing software or even how you're going to capture your video. So as I mentioned before, the software I'm using to actually capture the video is I'm just using QuickTime, which comes with uh, any Apple laptop or desktop. So QuickTime works well if you're on a PC. Uh, there's uh, usually most computers these days are going to come with some um, screen capture or video capture uh, software. I like uh, in QuickTime, you have the option to uh, screen capture or you can do what's called create a movie. And if you use to create a movie, what it does is it uses your built in uh, HD camera on your Apple desktop or your Apple laptop. So those certainly will work. Um, there are other, you know, sometimes you could use, um, Google Meet, or you could use Zoom and then use, uh, because as you do uh, record meetings, you do have the option to record the video. So you could even use those capture video if you're doing, particularly if you're doing an interview with someone else and you want to get video for both of the speakers, uh, Google Meet or Zoom meetings would be a good option to consider. Now, once you capture that video, the next thing you want to consider is how are you going to edit that video together into a final product? Now, again, with any Apple product, uh, one of the things that's going to come with that is iMovie. And so iMovie is great where you can drop different video clips in. And even with this video, I've created probably, I don't know, uh, maybe nine or 10 different uh, video clips for the video that I'm then going to uh, drop in and edit parts of that out and copy and paste it and that sort of thing. Uh, the thing that's great about when it comes to video is a lot of those commands we're used to like just dealing with a word processor like copy and paste are pretty universal commands. Um, with uh, Apple computers, I know particularly when we're working in DAWs like GarageBand or Logic or Soundtrap, or others, you can use the option button just to click on something and quickly copy and paste whatever you've selected. Um, and that's pretty universal for any video editing software that you're using too. So if you have a little section of your video that you wanna use, you can trim out that little piece, hold your option button, click and drag it, and uh, pretty easily uh, duplicate that, duplicate that, duplicate that, duplicate that. So iMovie works um, really well. Uh, that's what I used. Uh, pretty much exclusively when I first started doing videos. 
But several years ago, I did uh, invest in getting the Apple Teacher uh, creative software package, maybe they call it. Um, and I think for teachers, it's actually a really great price. It's like 300 bucks. And for that, you get Logic Pro. You also get um, what they call Final Cut. And so Logic Pro is sort of like the um, professional version of GarageBand. Final Cut is the professional version of iMovie. So there are actually television shows, uh, major motion pictures that have all been uh, edited and created on uh, Final Cut by Apple. Um, so Final Cut's what I use, and there's so many things that Final Cut that can do that I am not ever going to touch. Uh, but there are some things in there that are pretty simple to figure out how to do that uh, Final Cut does pretty easily that iMovie, you can sort of make iMovie do it, but it's not really designed to do it, and it's a real pain in the neck. Uh, like if you're trying to put like a video on one side and putting uh, an image with it as you go, like there's workarounds you can do that with iMovie, but it's not very easy. Uh, Final Cut, uh, once you figure out how to do it, and it's not too hard to figure out. Maybe I'll do a video on using Final Cut later. But Final Cut's great uh, to edit uh, your videos and create some good, um, you know, overlays and some transitions and things like that. So, but again, um, I would recommend uh, with any really any kind of software, if there's like a consumer version, like GarageBand is considered the consumer DAW for Apple, whereas Logic Pro is considered the industry or professional version. So iMovie is the consumer version of their video editing software. Uh, Final Cut is their uh, version for professional use. Um, and I'm sure there's other uh, software packages you can get for PC uh, and, and other things. But I use Final Cut Pro. Uh, to put all of the my final videos together now these days. And again, for educators uh, with Apple, you, like you can get, I think it's Final Cut, Logic Pro. Um, I'll have to look those up. But anyway, you get like four different programs for like, I think it's 300 bucks, 350 bucks, which is really a great deal. Because That's going to wrap up the video today. For those of you that have stayed and listened to it for this long, thank you so much for watching the video. The biggest thing you can do to support this channel and support what I'm trying to do is to subscribe to the to my YouTube channel. So it's Mutec Teacher Net on YouTube. And if you would subscribe to the channel, I would appreciate that so very much. Uh, I don't send a bunch of like junk emails and stuff. Usually when I create a video, I don't even click the box that sends automatic notifications to subscribers because that can be kind of irritating too. So but just to have a list of subscribers is really, really helpful to the channel. The other thing is that if you'll leave reviews, particularly if they're positive reviews, can be very helpful. And always feel free to email me if you have ideas or suggestions, if there's a topic you would like to like for me to cover or some part of the video that you'd like for me to go into more detail with. Please uh, feel free to leave comments in the comment box or you can email me directly. My email address is heath at mutechteachernet.com. Dot com. And so always uh, communicate directly. I'd also encourage you to check out the podcast, um, the audio version of the podcast, which can be found anywhere you listen to your podcast, whether it's Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Stitcher. It's available on all of those podcast platforms. And the podcast is just called Mutech Teacher Talk. Uh, and my website, www.mutechteachernet.com. With all of you out there who are creative and inspiring teachers that are showing your students how they can be creative and how they can be inspired to create really great content, whether it's music, whether it's visual, or whether it's sound. I wish you the very best of luck, and I hope to see you next time on the next episode where I'll be interviewing Dr. Jason Freeman, who is the head of the Music Technology Department at Georgia Tech here in Atlanta, Georgia. He is doing some amazing things, and I hope you check that out. That'll be on the audio podcast of the version a week from, day, from today's release. Take care. <laughs>